A cyber attack against telecommunications giant Optus. One of the biggest cyber attacks in Australian history. Compromising the details of 10 million customers. And Australia's international spy network is hunting the culprits. We still don't know, because Optus isn't saying and the government hasn't said yet, um, how this breach occurred and who is responsible. Sally Ulrich is the Director of Corporate Affairs at Optus. You would know that the identities are probably being replicated as we speak. I actually haven't been informed of anyone's um, information being used like that yet. That doesn't mean that hasn't happened. The Optus data breach is incredibly concerning and if there are changes to the arrangements that need to be made in the future, the Minister uh, will make that clear. Prime Minister, the Optus data breach... Look, this is a huge wake-up call for the corporate sector. This is a very, very significant uh, problem for the government. Claire O'Neill, first of all, how much clarity have you got from Optus about what sort of personal data has been stolen and what period does it cover? Is it only existing Optus customers who need to be worried? Thanks, Laura. Uh, we've got quite detailed information from Optus about uh, what the security breach has um, put into the public realm. We know that for 9.8 million Australians, some basic personal information has been stolen from Optus, but for 2.8 million Australians, quite extensive personal data, which includes things like licence numbers and passport numbers, have been taken. The reason this is so concerning to us is because what this effectively amounts to is 100 points of ID check, and so the scope for identity theft and fraud is quite significant in particular for those 2.8 million Australians. How could that happen? I mean, how, how could a telecommunications company even have that much uh, personal uh, ID? It seems extraordinary. Yeah, so um, absolutely. How could this happen? Um, I think that the Albanese government is, is asking Optus that question at the moment. And I'd point to not just the scope and amount of data that was held, uh, Laura, because telecommunications companies by their nature will hold a lot of data about Australians. What is uh, a, a, of concern for us is how what is a, quite a basic hack was undertaken on Optus. We should not have a telecommunications provider in this country, which has effectively left the window open for data of this nature to be stolen. And the thing that's very uh, exercising for me as cybersecurity minister is why did this happen and how can we make sure it never happens again? Well, you certainly don't seem to be buying the line from Optus that this was a sophisticated attack. Well, it wasn't, so no. Right, um, so... Um the fact that uh, uh, Optus is trying to make amends by offering its most affected victims uh, sort of year-long free subscriptions to credit monitoring services and uh, identity protection services uh, to s help stop that risk of ID theft. Is that an adequate response from them in the, in the, in the first stages? Well, it, it's certainly not an adequate response, but I'm pleased that Optus have made this commitment today. So I called on Optus in question time to provide credit monitoring for those most affected customers. And later this afternoon, they agreed to do that. And I thank Optus for assisting with that. Uh, this is not the end of the story here. We are still going to be talking about the Optus hack in the weeks to come. Optus need to um, communicate clearly to their customers about exactly what um, information has been taken from specific individuals and then needs to assist and support customers to manage the impacts of what is an unprecedented theft of uh, consumer information in Australian history. Is that 2.8 million uh, group, the this, this smaller group that's lost a lot more details, mm. um, what identified them as being particularly vulnerable or why did they lose more of their, uh, their personal information? It was just the way that the data was organised within Optus and how it was taken during the, uh, the breach that it occurred. It wasn't a particular type of client um, for services or anything like that? I'm not sure about that information, Laura. And one of the, um, the uh, themes that's emerged for me today is the need for Optus to clarify uh, to their customers about who has had that additional amount of information taken and why. And I'll talk to Optus about that this evening. What powers have you got to find out from Optus what's happened uh, and what's the role of the government more broadly yeah. here? 
So this is a really important question, Laura, and I am um, making sure that I note through this experience some of the policy levers that are not available to me that I believe should be. So if I can just step back a little bit, um, I don't want to blame this on the former government, but I just want to note that we are probably a decade behind in privacy protections where we ought to be. I would say we're about five years behind in cyber protections than where we should be given how fast things are moving. When it comes to cyber protections, the previous government put in place a very significant piece of legislation that I think was a very good start, but it didn't br um, bring telecommunications companies into that legislation. And so what it's meant is that I am more limited with telecommunications companies in terms of the powers that I have. Now, the reason that it did that is because at the time, the telecommunications sector said, don't worry about us, we're really good at cyber security, we'll do it without being regulated. And I would say that this incident uh, really calls that um, assertion into question. And this whole issue of governments sort of stepping into that cyber security space in a more broadly has been a mm. contentious one for some time. Uh, what government agencies are now involved in trying to track down who did this and uh, how successful, how sort of confident are you that you'll be able to sort of try to ameliorate the damage? Yeah, OK. So if I could just make a general comment, um, I think we have gone on a journey globally about cybersecurity of perceiving this as between an individual customer and a private company. You see with Optus that when this happens at a broad scale, it becomes a much bigger issue. And we've got, you know, half of Australian adults here who have had some data breach here. And it's clearly not just between Optus and the customer. The government has to be involved when the stakes are this high. Um, we have had... Um, extensive support provided to Optus through the Australian government on the technical and operational side. So I'm talking there about the Australian Signals Directorate, um, the Australian Federal Police and the Australian Cyber Security Centre that have worked very closely with them on um, the technical and operational side. But I don't want to make too much comment about that, as you'll understand, this is um, on foot at the moment. So looking at what you do now to yep. stop it in the future, um, are you looking at both changes to the laws about what uh, companies can hold and or more draconian fines potentially to make sure that uh, they look after data more uh, carefully? Yeah. So, Laura, it's on my mind. The key focus for us, though, at the moment is almost 10 million Australians who have had some of their personal information taken. And so the, the focus for us is trying to assist Australians to make sure that they're not at risk of, of some type of financial crime. So that is my focus at the moment, but there will certainly need to be a good thorough look at the end-to-end -end management of this from the Optus perspective. And I think we need to be looking at um, a variety of issues, including the powers that I have as cybersecurity minister to mandate minimum cybersecurity standards, which could have prevented this from occurring. But I do also want to note that in, uh, in other countries around the world, a breach of this scale would result in hundreds of millions of dollars worth of fines against a company like Optus. We have a maximum of just over $2 million is the maximum fine under breaches of the Privacy Act. Totally inappropriate. So I think there's a few things that we're going to need to look at. But at the moment, we've got 10 million Australians who are anxious about their data being stolen. And our focus is trying to give them some sense that we can support them in any way we can. Claire O'Neill, thanks for your time tonight. Thanks, Laura.